हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई एम डॉक्टर सौरभ पटवर्धन फ्रॉम नंदादीप आई हॉस्पिटल पीजी जी टीचिंग इंस्टीट्यूट एंड फेको एस आई सी एस ट्रेनिंग सेंटर सांगली महाराष्ट्र इंडिया इन अवर सेंटर वी हैव लॉट ऑफ टीचिंग एक्टिविटीज विच इंक्लूड्स हैंड्स ऑन ट्रेनिंग एज वेल इन दिस वीडियो आई एल बी स्पीकिंग अबाउट अ केस ऑफ ट्रोमेटिक कैटरैक इन यंग पेशेंट what is the thought process behind and what is the advantage of low iop fake co in these cases so i have taken this patient under peribulbar block these particular cases where we don't want any inadvertent movement of the eye which may jeopardize the final result i usually take these cases under peribulbar block and as you notice i am making a corneal scleral incision kind of a tunnel so that in case because here you can see that there is a area which has a ruptured capsule it's a injury by wire and that pierces through and through through the cornea into the lens and we don't know the status of posterior capsule or even whether this uh, tear has extended till the pc zonules we don't know that so i took a scleral tunnel so in case i have to place say a uh, iris claw iol i can just enlarge this and place iris claw iol and then suture it on the scleral side so i first i stained and uh, you could see that i stained it again under the iris so that i get uniform staining all throughout and then use the heavy dispersive agent hyaluronic now let's watch there is a ruptured anterior capsule here and i will just retract the iris and see where it is going and you can see some amount of subcapsular fibrosis and usually that's the area where it gets stained little less so approximately that's the area of subcapsular fibrosis though it may be even more there can be radial tax as well so i am now retracting the iris here just release this synecky and then i will just retract and see whether i can see the extension of this tear so you can see that it's not extending till the equator so and it's fibrous so hopefully it won't give away during the surgery but of course i have to be careful i made another side port incision there so that i can maneuver the capsular axis from the small incision rather than using the main larger incision and uh, when i started this capsular axis at the center you can see as expected there was subcapsular fibrosis here and i couldn't proceed with the needle there so in such cases what i do i put the sinski underneath and try to tear the capsule over that so i am trying to do that now this particular angle is little odd for using the capsular axis caesar here but it would have been a better choice i would say because you can see that as i tried to do that because of the spool the capsular axis started extending along the lines of fibrosed subcapsular area so here when we start pulling it with capsular axis forceps you will find that uh, usually tears at the end of that fibrous area so you have to track where exactly the fibrosis is so this is what i feel the area of fibrosis if there is any radial band there you have to just wait there because that's the area where it might go outwards so there might be extension if there is a radial component but if it is fibrous only in the central area as in this case you can see the capsule nicely tears at the junction of this fibrosis and a normal capsule now as i come to the end you can see there is intense fibrosis there so now i'm going to use the caesar so these micro axis caesars are essential for dealing with these cases so i cut it on the other side also and after making the cut i am trying to complete it using the forceps again but you can see there is still subcapsular fibrosis there and i don't want to pull it more because i don't want that tear to extend now to the zonular area so i'll just use the capsular axis caesar micro caesar to complete the axis we can also use vitrectomy cutter at high speed and uh, low vacuum and trim it and when i try to remove this anterior capsule you can see it's still attached so that subcapsular fibrosis was going till the periphery luckily there was uh, no extension 
and now instead of trying to pull it completely I am trying to cut this fibrosed area so I can release that capsule and remove it without uh, pulling the peripheral capsule in these cases of traumatic cataracts where the injury is by thorn or wire like this there can be a PC tear which is pre-existing so here I use the very good function with active fluidics of Centurion which is low IOP so you can see I have kept the IOP just 30 so that you immediately will understand that as I entered the IA probe there was no deepening of the anterior chamber and that's the advantage of using low IOP so if there was a PC tear say at this point it may not open because we are using low IOP and if anterior phyloid is intact it may just stay intact and that's a quite good advantage because if we use very high botulite or high IOP if there is a small tear it might just extend and you may have vitreous prolapse so this low IOP function definitely helps with gravity based machines you can keep the botulite low and use low vacuum and flow rate to achieve similar advantage here the even the capsular polish you have to be really careful so that you don't pull on those open capsular tags there try to remove as much as cortex as possible safely remember keeping the posterior capsule intact will give much more advantage than removing all of cortex if you have little bit tags of cortex left that's fine most often it gets absorbed might be little bit of inflammation early post op but in the long term it may not have much problems or much sequelae but a torn posterior capsule or a tear from uh, anterior capsule to posterior capsule may be a problem because it may hamper the placement of PCIL as I complete the cortex removal again most important thing is to do the OVD fluid exchange I think that's the term you should keep in mind whenever we have cases where the posterior capsule or anterior capsule are compromised and this is the maneuver that you should practice in even regular cases so that when the requirement comes you are ready your left hand is already trained for doing this now I'm going to place a single piece aisle here of course I can place a three piece aisle in the sulcus but uh, I have already chosen a single piece aisle and there is adequate support from the capsule just one fourth of the anti capsule here is absent but the trick here is how to put this aisle in the bag so you can see that the first haptic has already gone into the bag and second haptic instead of rotating this IOL because that's what we generally do to place the second haptic in the bag I'm going to push and pull using two Sinski so this is important because if we try to rotate this aisle in the bag again there is a little chance that this radial tears might extend into you know posterior capsule so you need to take every precaution here to avoid those uh, inadvertent outcomes if you don't take these precautions maybe at times you may not have any complication but there is always an increased risk so again for visco wash you can see that i am using just 30 mm of hg iop which is very very low just like approximately 40 42 centimeters of bottle height which you can see that the anterior chamber remains at its depth not very deep there is no push over the anterior capsule or the posterior capsule or the IOL and that makes the surgery much much safer so always plan few things beforehand keep the backup ready here I had kept SFIL or iris cloyal as a backup for this case and then deliver the results thank you so much and do subscribe